round 16 of the 2024 ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. And it all comes down to this end. Three drivers in with a shout of the title. Four points separating them. Winner takes all stakes pretty much going into this, the final race of the season. Antonio Felix da Costa inside the top 10 and likewise Ollie Rowland, that's their second successive top 10 start each in the race. Sam Bird eighth for the number eight in the Neil McLaren and Stoffel van Dorn in the DS Penske lines up seventh on the grid. Here are your top six then, Jean-Eric Verne, he's not scored a point in London since 2016. Let's see what he can do. Robin Freint's best grid position in London since 2016. Envision and Andretti separated by four points for sixth in the team's championship. Championship leader now, Pascal Verlein, winner yesterday. His nearest rival though, is this man, Mitch Evans. He's just ahead of him on that second row of the grid. Can the Kiwi do it? What about Max Gunter, though? He's the outlier. He was denied a podium after a gearbox failure yesterday. He'll be seeking vengeance today, but it's Nick Cassidy, pole for the second year in a row in London. He's within four points of the championship leader coming into this, the final race of the season. It is going to be hugely exciting to see what happens. It's a title decider in the Thames, eyes on the lights, and we're underway here in London. Good start then from Nick Cassidy, who immediately chops over to thwart the charge of Max Gunter, side by side there with Mitch Evans, going in towards turn one and two, and he goes up, so it's a Jaguar, one, two, as we head through three and four. Keep an eye out for Verline, he's coming to pressure here from Robin Freint in the Envision, he's trying to muscle his way on the outside. The two DS Penske's of Vernon Van Dorn lining astern, but no progress made on the opening lap there for Verline, but Evans up through into second. Bit. Oh, oh no, we've got Nata, uh, sorry, Jake Dennis and Edo Mortara that have come to blows. Let's have a look if we can see what happened. Dennis is yeah, taking for Wendy. The, broke the steering on, on Mortara and Mortara went straight, I think. Just didn't realise he was there on the inside, did he, Dennis? T1 seems to be a good spot for overtaking according to statistics. Uh, two car behind on attack mod. Verline to the inside, looking at the final corner on Max Gunter. Needs to get the better of the Maserati. Gets it done and does indeed move up into third place. So it's now championship protagonist one, two and three. And here comes Robin Freint as well, looking to the inside of Max Gunter into the first corner. Doesn't make the move stick down into turn one. It's got double yellow at turn six, and that's why oh, there's oh, an incident there. Cars. Yeah, three cars involved. Sam Bird, Norman Nato, Dan Tictum have all ended up in the barrier. So you've got uh, the Porter in front. It's all gonna. I think there's gonna be a, a whack from behind here, possibly. Yeah, there was Bird. Roland and the Costa. Then there's Bird and the Maserati. Ah, oh, so he connected with Daruvala. Oh, it all bottled up into the attack mode we go. Where's it going to emerge for Nick Cassidy? He's going to be behind his teammates, or is he? Oh. It's close between them through turn 17, and Cassidy does just hold on to the lead. So we understand that he's been told to let Mitch Evans through on the attack mode, but is that going to drop him behind Pascal Verline? It is. Yeah, but can he get back at Verline? Because d does Evans now back Verline up to give Cassidy some opportunity? Here oh. we go, Verline on the inside, and Evans contact down at the first corner. Evans just holds on to the race lead. This is getting punchy between the top three. Championship on the line here. Squeezed him to the curb on the inside, didn't he there, Mitch Evans? He looks up the inside, does oh. Vern. Oh, can he get the move done in the DS Penske? He can, so that's not what DaCosta or Verline or Porsche no, no, wanted. It's not, done. it's not done. No, DaCosta still there on the inside. He's going to have trap position here into turn 20. Can he hold it, though? Can he get the traction out of the corner just about? But Vern's still there. Side by side, they go down the start finish straight. We're side by side for the lead once again here between Evans and Verline once more. DaCosta on the inside. Vern's on the outside. Contact between the two at the second corner. And here comes Max Gunter as well trying to join in the party. This is getting fast, frantic, and DaCosta's going to have a face full of wall if he's not careful. Down the ramp we go. Gunter on the outside. You can't go two by two through here. It's no. going to get messy between them. Gunter does get the better of DaCosta and goes through into sixth place. Look at this as well. DaCosta with Oliver Rowland and Gunter involved in the mix there as well. Gunter and DaCosta side by side through the final sector. The DAC attack there over the rise and look once oh, again at Verlein. Cassidy, Cassidy's lost out. Yeah, and here comes Roland going through into third place. It's not working out now for Nick Cassidy in the Twitter. Oh, 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 puncture, puncture, He's rear right puncture oh, for Nick Cassidy. Nick Cassidy oh. and Debris on the track and Gunter's front wing's gone as well. Cassidy into the pitch. Championship over for Nick Cassidy. I've just been taken out by DaCosta, right rear. He just smashed into the side of me. 
They've got to get Cassidy out of the pits. Look, they've gone for the attack. Most Roland takes the lead. Safety, Safety car's car. out. They missed it. They missed it. Yeah, Both drivers have missed it. They've missed the attack mode deployment. They're not in attack mode then. Oh, oh that's the Costa. Costa. Ran into the back and of the chair. The that's the puncher. Cassidy's puncher. Oh, he just got biffed into ah, the back Gunter. there by Gunter. They go into attack mode. They both have to. There's no choice for them. What about Antonio Fritz de Costa? Oh, oh, close there with Freitz and Verline on the inside into 17. Two Porsches, Linusen and de Costa plays the beautiful team game there and allows his teammate back through and holds up Robin Freitz. Evans is now into the lead. Roland's down into second as well. But I, I wonder if Roland has given up that position because of the, the risk safety of car. overtaking under safety car. Yeah. So I think he's done that on purpose. Where's it going to be, though, for Roland and Verline? Verline also goes in. Evans has missed attack mode again for a second time in succession. The wheels are coming off the wagon in the closing stages of this championship. Can you believe the tension here for this team? And can you believe the delight for Takoya Porsche? Uh right, so Mitch Evans does get the attack mode then, but you can see the delight there for Takoya Porsche. It allows Verline through and it allows him the Drivers' Championship for now. He's come so close on quite a few occasions, and now it is just two corners from home for the young German Honshot. Through the final couple of turns, out of turn 20, and Pascal Verline for Porsche becomes the 2024 Formula E World Champion here in London. Oliver Rowland takes victory, Verline in second, and Mitch Evans in third place. Oh, man. What did we just do? The delight for Porsche will go on, I'm sure, into tonight as Pascal Verline stands atop the Tag Heuer Porsche machine. And in the final race for Gen 3, he becomes the victor of the title. So let's have a look at the results from round 16, the final race of 2024 here in London. Oliver Rowland takes his first victory, but Pascal Verline finishing in second place sees him crowned as the driver's world champion. Mitch Evans in third place, a great result for Sebastian Buemi, a podium yesterday, and then fourth place here today. Further down the order, here are the drivers that sadly failed to score points. They'll be hoping for more forward progress as we head into season 11. Pascal Verline, you joined Formula E in 2018. You moved across to Porsche in 2020. And now in season 10, you are the Formula E world champion. How does that sound? Uh, awesome, uh, really awesome. Yeah, it's. I don't know where to start. The race was was hard. Um, obviously, I knew I had to attack and I had to get in front of the jacks. Um, yeah, I think Mitch defended quite hard, um, but I, I still tried, you know, uh, to overtake and pass. And um, I don't know what happened in the end. If um, yeah, it was due to the safety car that it got quite close with the attack modes or because he missed it. I really don't know what uh, in the end was was the outcome. But uh, yeah, nevertheless, I think what we did this weekend, especially, you know, we knew that uh, yesterday and today um, are the days and we need to be super focused, concentrated. Um, outperform probably what um, what the car can do and uh, what we could do here in London because this has never been a track which suits our car uh, and I think we did that I think we clearly uh, showed some great pace and yeah I'm I'm very happy for myself <laughs> but even more for the team I mean, it's been an, a dramatic season you know highs and lows and you've you know pit yourself up pushed through just reflecting on it all, you know, this is it, this is your moment. How does it really feel? You're finally here as a world champion. It feels good. I don't know what to, what to say if it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely not expected, you know, it's, you, you turn up, you know, you have a chance. Um, but I always believed in it uh, the last couple of weeks, every day before, you know, my day was starting and my day finished. Um, 
I said, I can do this, we can do this. And even if the last couple of races, the performance was not that strong and I was struggling a bit with, with the car and what I felt in the car, I said, it doesn't matter. Um, I could see it. Um, I told myself every day um, and I'm just super proud of everyone in the team. Huge congratulations to yourself and the team. Pascal Merlein, our Formula E world champion. Pascal Verlein on 199 points becomes the Formula E Drivers World Champion of Season 10. Mitch Evans and Nick Cassidy, they fought valiantly right until the chequered flag. And an unfortunate end for them, but they will go again, I'm sure, and bounce back for Season 11. Oliver Rowland, 25 points for him on the board, secures him fourth in the final standings. And Jake Dennis, reigning world champion, they're down in seventh overall as well. Further down the order, you see Buemi, Muller, Bird, Nato and Hughes completing the top 15. Mortaren, Fenestras de Vries, Tictum, set a camera inside the top 20. Jay Handerouvler in his rookie season of Formula E has 21, uh, 21st on the overall point standings. And that's what it means to Pascal Verline. Great job from him in 2024, right there when it mattered. And put together a fantastic weekend. There's absolutely no doubt about it. Four victories this season. The team's championship goes the way of Jaguar TCS Racing. Jaguar's first international title since 1991. They get the better of Tag Heuer Porsche. Diaz Penske in third. Nissan in fourth, Andretti in fifth ahead of Envision, who get the better of Neon McLaren at the end of the season. You can see Maserati ahead of Apt and then Mahindra as well. And there's the celebrations for James Barkley and for Jaguar TCS Racing on the podium. And the Manufacturer's Trophy, brand new for season 10 in Formula E. It goes the way of Porsche but not by a very big margin. You can see there just seven points separating Porsche and Jaguar. Pascal Verline, right when it mattered, he was there ready for the taking and he stands aloft the podium as the 2024 Formula E World Champion.